What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're going to be doing the dealer prep for this newly acquired Toyota Tacoma for this channel. We'll also be doing a tour of most of the features for this truck along with what's planned for this truck as well. So let's go ahead get this Tacoma ready for the road and establish some future plans for it. It's a beautiful afternoon. The sun is out. Temperature is nice. So let's go ahead and prep this thing like the dealer would. Obviously, we need to take this window sticker off. Take all the plastic off the seats, front and the back jump seats right there. And there's the OEM front bumper license plate bracket. I'm not sure if I'll put this on, but I might actually do a custom bracket to avoid drilling the front bumper. Take the plastic off the sun visors here. Take off this airbag label along with this m 2 Looks like there's another sticker right there on the radio and there's no plastic here on the sill on the passenger side take the stickers off the wheels and tires take this little plastic guy off the door and over here in the driver's side we'll take this plastic off the carpet along with this plastic off the sill plates and obviously the plastic off the driver's side seat and then same thing with the driver's side rear off this jumper seat take it off the headrest and take it off the seat itself and we've got this plastic piece here protecting the paint on this sill right here so we'll peel that off so this is the last time we'll see this truck wrapped up on all plastic but it's kind of nice to see this thing born from the factory like this so let's go ahead and start taking the plastic off the interior Okay, now that the truck has been prepped, removing the window stickers and all the plastic on the inside, we need to go ahead and do its first wash. Had some rain come through earlier, that's why the truck's all wet. So let's go ahead and give this truck its first bath. And all the factory plastics 
and stickers and whatnot have been stripped off this Tacoma. So we've got a 2022 Toyota Tacoma Access Cab in Lunar Rock. This is the TRD Sport and it's got the six speed transmission, which is what I was seeking. Now let me go ahead and tell you why I chose the Access Cab as opposed to the Double Cab. I never have back passengers in the back seats of my cars, so there's no sense of me having you know, a four door truck. And on top of that, most of the double cabs have a shorter bed. So that's about a five foot bed, but however, this access cab has a six foot bed. So a lot more storage capacity back there for hauling stuff. And on top of that, in my opinion, I think the access cab has better proportions because if you look at the double cab with the short bed, that fender flare right there, it literally touches this cab right here on the double cab short bed. And I'm just not a fan of that look. Plus, I think this looks a little bit more sporty, in my opinion. It's just personal preference. Even though Toyota sells the majority of the double cab short beds, this is what I was seeking. So you can only get the access cab with the manual transmission for 2022 in the TRD Sport, which is fine with me. Let's go ahead and pop the hood here and show you real quick. All the Tacomas with a V6, regardless if it's a Pro or the SR5 V6, have this engine. This is a 3.5 with 270 horsepower and 265 foot-pounds of torque. Looks like got a fair amount of space inside here for working space, which is a good thing. Uh, compared to the RSX right there, it's hard to work with that car because the engine space is just very minimal. Anyhow, it looks pretty simple down here in the engine bay. As mentioned before, you know, you a lot of working space here on the side for wrenches and sockets and whatnot. Same thing here on the passenger side. Got a lot of working space as well between the fenders and the engine, and especially the space between the radiator core support and this front grill right here. I mean, look how much space we got right here. That's pretty impressive. So I don't plan on really modifying this truck too much mechanically wise, you know, I'm gonna leave the intake as is. You know, I'm not gonna replace exhaust headers. Just kind of keep this thing simple and reliable from the factory. I'm not really buying this thing for speed. I want this thing for reliability and hauling and whatnot. So seems to be an overall simple engine and easy to maintain. And hopefully I'm not gonna be replacing a lot of parts on this, but if I need to, there's gonna be working space available. So let me go ahead and show you what's going on the inside of this truck. Okay, so here's the inside tour. So never mind this little piece of plastic from the factory. I'm waiting for some Toyota floor liners to come into place. So whenever they arrive, I'll go ahead and peel this up and put the floor liners in. Don't wanna risk damaging my carpet. And this is the standard seat for the Tacoma for the most part. So you got the cement in the center and you got the charcoal on the outside. Now you can get leather, but I believe that's in the off-road premium technology package of some sort, but you can't get that in the TRD Sport access cab. I'm not sure about double cab. I'm more familiar with the access cab than anything. You know, it's just your simple uh, window switches right here, lock and unlock, your mirror control, and obviously the door switch and door lock. It looks like got auto headlights. This is a clutch start cancel button traction control and it looks like there is an AC outlet in the back you can turn on and off with this button right here. Steering wheel has got some nice perforated leather on here or if this is vinyl I'm not sure but it feels nice and thick. Stereo volume controls and tuning and it looks like telephone controls as well and it looks like these are basically for a menu most likely over here on the dashboard. I'm not quite sure what these buttons are I'm still learning about this truck. And as you can see we only got nine miles on this thing so when the sales lady texted me pictures, it had four miles on there. When I went to pick it up, the salesman had six on there after he filled it up with some fuel. So I drove this thing around the neighborhood for about three miles, just kind of getting used to the transmission and whatnot. So this will be the last time we'll see single digits on the odometer here, but we bought this thing to drive and not be a garage queen. And most importantly, the manual transmission. So one of the major requirements in buying a truck was a manual transmission. And there's only two trucks sold in America right now that still have the manual gearbox. That's the Toyota Tacoma and the Jeep Gladiator. I'm not really a fan of the Jeep Gladiator. It's just not my style of vehicle. And I'm glad that the Tacoma still carries this transmission. Even though only 5% is sold with this manual gearbox, where 95% of them are about automatic. And the access cabs are rare enough it is. And then pairing it with a manual transmission makes it more of a hen's tooth from what I was told. I was glad I found this thing with a manual gearbox. I was actually gonna settle on buying a used one, but luck has it where I was able to find this manual gearbox brand new truck. I was stressing that I wanted the manual transmission on this truck. I was not gonna settle for an automatic. I'm a big fan of manual gearboxes. I don't care if it's on a truck, 
SUV, minivan, sedan, sports car. It just gives the vehicle a whole different driving experience. And it doesn't matter if you're winding out the engine or just driving normally, you know, it's just controlling the vehicle, you know, it just makes for a whole different driving experience and it, it's more enjoyable than an automatic. I'm not a fan of clicking things back in three positions and pressing the pedal, but you know, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but this is just my personal preference. And this truck has the premium technology package, which has navigation and whatnot. Let me go ahead and put the key in ignition and give you a little demonstration. Now this truck did come with the premium technology package. I really didn't want it. This thing has navigation and also XM radio along with heated seats. And it was a kind of expensive package, but you know, it is what it is. I guess I had to settle with a few packages and it looks like obviously we got the climate controls and whatnot. I guess this is BSM blind spot monitor. And I guess this is for parking radar. So when you're backing up, I guess it starts beeping and whatnot. So I'll turn this off right now. USB outlet, typical 12 volt outlet. And I guess this is a little charging station for this little pad down here in front of the shifter. So I guess you can put your phone down there and push this button and it'll start charge up your phone without a wire and whatnot. Just a simple glove box, nothing too special. And then up here, we got a sunglass holder for sunglasses. Looks like this is an overhead light. And I believe both of these have a mirror. And it looks like this one also has programmable garage door openers. So I'll have to program my garage doors for these. And then we have a manual parking brake, which is nice. I'm not a fan of electronic brakes, which is basically becoming prevalent on a lot of the newer cars. And then the shift boot, it's like this cheap vinyl. Might have to fix that with a real leather shift boot. So let me know what you guys think. Should I replace these shift boots and the parking brake boots with some perforated leather boots with some maybe red stitching and whatnot for some nice accents? It's just kind of feel cheap a little bit. I'm not really too much of a fan of the shift boot, but at least we have the manual transmission. You got two cup holders right there, center console. Looks like some uh, USB ports down there. Go ahead and open up this back area. And we've got the jumper seats along with these fold down headrests. So I believe you just kind of fold these headrests upwards and it locks in position. Same thing with the fold down jump seats. It's not too bad back there. You want more storage capacity, you just hit this lever, pull it upwards. You got a little storage box down here. Open that up, put some stuff in storage. Nice little retainers for the seat belts. And I don't know what this is. It's a little storage tray. I mean, you got cup holders right here, so I'm not sure what that's for. You know, as I mentioned before, we got the floor liners coming in, so don't have any protection right now back there. Now, one of the packages that came with this truck is this Toyota tonneau cover right here. I don't know if I said it right. I wasn't really a fan when I saw it in the window sticker, but I'm starting to like this thing. Let me go ahead and give you guys a demonstration. It's also got a soft fold down rear tailgate. And as you can see down here, basically you just pull this lever backwards, lift this up, and kind of fold it down. There's another lever right down here on the left-hand side. Pull it backwards, pull it up. All right, this thing's a little heavy, so I'm gonna have to put this camera down and show you. And there's the tonneau cover folded in two ways right there. And here's this little lever I was talking about. Basically just pull this backwards and it opens up. Has a nice little lever system. You can take these straps Lock it in right there. Lock this strap on the passenger side as well. And there you go. Tonal cover is locked down, so it can have an open load for the most part. Now you can't remove this entire tonal cover. Let me go ahead and fold it out and show you how to do that. There's a little rubber cover here on the passenger side. Pull this up, exposes this bolt. The bolt looks like a 12 millimeter from appearance. And I believe you undo this bolt and you should be able to remove the tonal cover and that method right there. And we got all the plastic from the seats. 
Go ahead and recycle this at your local grocery store. This will make Trex deck boards. And here's the OEM front license plate bracket. I will not be putting this on because you have to drill in the front bumper. And this came in the cab as well. These are some D-rings. These will go along inside the bed rails right there. Now, since this truck came with a technology package, this has the rear sonar right there. And these come with painted rear bumper covers. If you don't get the technology package on the TRD Sport, it comes with chrome bumpers, which I think the painted bumpers look great. Okay, now the major differences between the TRD Sport and the TRD Off-Road is you have a hood scoop right here on the TRD Sports. And the TRD Sport also has body colored fender flares around the tires, whereas the Off-Road does not have the hood scoop and has black plastic fender flares. Also, the Off-Road has a locking rear differential. This one does not have the locking rear diff. So if you do a lot of hardcore off-roading, you might want to look into the off-road version. I believe we've got that little shark fin antenna. That's for the navigation, the XM radio. Now the two gripes I have about this truck so far, let me go ahead and explain it to you. So when I was test driving a double cab short bed truck, which was only manual transmission around the area for like 45 miles, it had a power sliding rear window. So there was a button here on the console. So once you hit that button, the rear window would basically automatically just slide itself and you can slide it closed. Let's see this one. It's a manual window. So that's one gripe. You know, that power sliding window is pretty cool. Now, if you're gonna go with the Toyota Tundra because the Tacoma is too small for you, I'm not sure which trim levels have it, but there's a rear window and you hit a button and the whole window just drops down and you got that whole open space. It's a very nice feature to have. I borrowed a Tundra from a friend years ago to go pick up my first motorcycle and just put that rear window down. It was a nice, cool spring day, and it was just perfect. I loved it. That was one of my favorite features of that truck. But, you know, manual sliding window, I can live with. It is what it is, but just a small complaint. And the one thing on the transmission that I've noticed so far that I do not like is, see, I'm used to putting the transmission all the way to the right and down for reverse. That's not the case here. Now the reverse here on this truck is to the up and left. I'm not really a fan of it, but you really have to take your hand in your palm and slam this thing. So go just all the way that way and then upwards and now you're in reverse. So it can be dangerous sometimes because if you're in a rush and you're in the road and whatnot and you really want to get that thing in first real quick, you might have a tendency to really put that thing all the way to the left and up. And that could put in reverse, but I did notice that when you do put in reverse, it has a beep sound on the dashboard. So that's a good little notification, but it is what it is. At least I got a manual transmission here. I'm pretty happy about that. So it's something I'm gonna have to get used to. So I just kind of wish that the reverse was all the way to the right and downwards as opposed to six gear. But instead you have to hit your hand pretty hard to the left-hand side and upwards, and now you're in reverse. Just a small nuance, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. And then one thing I definitely do like about this truck is it's got a regular key. I'm not a fan of the key fobs, you know, those little rectangle things with just buttons on them that actually emit an electronic signal to lock and unlock the car. I had that on a Ford Mustang I used to own. I was never really a fan. You know, I just think there's more security with a regular key than those little key fobs because I've just heard about horror stories about, you know, criminals having software and you know, replicating the signal to get in your car and steal it and whatnot, but I'm just a big fan of regular keys. You, know, you just take your key, put ignition, and turn it, start the car up. This is what I like. You know, it's just simple things like this little key right here that I like. A lot of people like the key fobs that are, you know, no key involved, and you just push a button to start the car and whatnot, but I like putting the thing in ignition and actually making that turn. It's just personal preference. Okay, so let me go ahead and talk about some potential modifications I'm thinking about doing this truck. You know, keeping it all stock is a little boring. I don't want to go overboard in this truck, so let me know you guys' thoughts are on some of the proposed modifications. So I mentioned here with the parking brake boot and the shift boot, this is just a thin vinyl, I guess. It doesn't really look nice. I'm thinking I'm going with like a perforated leather, you know, with a red stitching and whatnot. Obviously, the leather will be a black color. I don't want to do colors. It just looks a little cheesy. And same thing here with the shift boot. You do a little perforated parking brake boot along with red stitching. So let me know what you guys think on that. 
Another thing I'm considering on the inside, it's just a little, little small little item, but on this glove box, you got these recessed Tacoma letters. And there's a company that makes raised letters that go into each opening and they're in different colors. So I'm thinking about doing like a little red letters to kind of match the accents on the shift boot, you know, a little bit of red. Now, another thing on the shifter while we're talking about it is the shift knob. I'm not too crazy about this. It's kind of ugly. It looks like a little sphere. And it looks like half the sphere is like pulling backwards out of this thing. Not crazy about the design. So I'm thinking about a TRD Pro shift knob. It has TRD written right here and it's more of like a square design. And it has the one through six imprint on top. That's actually black and it's got some red accents. And I think it will go well with the red stitching. So let me know what you guys think of that shift knob option. Now these wheels and tires, I'm not too crazy about these things. They're a little bit recessed inside the fenders. They look a little small and they're a little bit narrow. I'm just not too crazy about the design as wheels. So I am considering some different wheels and tires. These are 17s right here. The off-road comes with 16s. So maybe I'll step up to an 18, I'm not sure. But I actually want something that actually come out to the fender a little bit, maybe flush with that fender give a little more aggressive stance. So I'm still contemplating on wheels and tires. It's gonna be kind of a pricey thing, but I'll kind of roll on these for a few months and see what I can find and do some research. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions. I know Volk Racing does make some TE37s for trucks. And I believe, I think uh, Daytona, which is another division of uh, Volk Racing makes a nice, I think an M8 wheel. I think that's only available in 17 though. And then over here on the tailgate, you got these recessed Tacoma letters. Now Toyota and many other aftermarket manufacturers make raised letters that go inside here. So you can get chrome or black. I'm thinking about black. I think it'll look pretty good along with, you know, all the black accents it's got with the handle, you know, with the bumper, parking sonar and whatnot. So let me know what you guys think about the recessed letters inside the tailgate. Now the taillights I'll probably leave alone. These are chrome right now. The TRD Pro has a black accent on the inside. Gives it a more sporty appearance, but I don't know if it's worth it. And another thing is the stickers and emblems. I kind of like this rear sticker on the rear fender. Some people peel it off, but I actually might just leave that. I do like that little sticker. And then you got these Tacoma badges here on the door. I don't know if I like this too much. So if we go with black letters on the rear tailgate, it's not gonna coordinate well. Plus washing and wax around this thing might be a pain in the butt. So I actually might just shave this emblem off, you know, for a more smoother look. Again, if you guys can provide your input below in the comments, greatly appreciated. And then we got the front grill. So the SR and SR5 have a more vertical type of layout for the grill. This grill, I believe, is the same for the off-road and TRD Sport, which kind of has a little weird little pattern, how these things protrude out and whatnot, like a zigzag type of thing. Should I keep this grill or should I go with a TRD Pro grill? which basically has Toyota written across here with a black stripe. And it's got a lot smaller details on the inside of the grill. And regardless, whichever grill I go with, the Pro or keeping this sport grill stock, they do have Raptor lights that go on the inside of the openings of the top of the grill, which basically be small orange lights that light up with their parking lights or headlights. I think it's a nice little accent. And that came off of the Ford Raptor idea. So a lot of Forerunners and Tacomas run those lights and I want to get those They're not too expensive. And one thing I did forget to mention is this truck came with the LED headlight and fog light package. That was one of my requirements of the truck. I believe that package was $485. Now, if you bought this headlight specifically separate in the parts department, I believe they're $550 to $600 each. So let me go ahead and show you what these things look like in the daytime. I don't know if you can see them, but we'll turn the headlights on and show you. But basically this whole thing lights up and then when the turn signal goes these are like sequential so it just basically lights the outside it's pretty crazy and there's the sequential lights right there that's pretty wicked i like these headlights a lot so it's pretty important to get the oem led headlight and fog light package with this truck otherwise if you were to upgrade these headlights by itself you have to buy these things individually, which will be about $1,100 plus. And on top of that, you need to get a special adapter for the cabling and whatnot. So it's just more headache and whatnot. And the taillights are not LED, as you can see. Just typical incandescent bulbs. I did forget to mention, this truck does have a trailer hitch. So 
that's factory installed. You got two pin system right here. You got the three pins. And you got the seven pin system. That is awesome. So the big text trailer will be pulled with this truck with nine issue. All right, we got the dealer prep all complete on our own, making sure not to scratch up the paint. And it turned out phenomenal. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted up an Instagram survey of which truck cab configuration I should go with. And the majority of y'all like the double cab short bed. Let me know what you guys think. So I went with the double cab short bed, or are you guys liking this access cab long bed? Anyways, we've got some special plans for this truck, and hope y'all can join along as we make this thing even better from the factory. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. For channel updates, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.